Royal tutors were talented and wise people recruited to tutor princes in preparation for their succession to the throne. This is Hyde, who was called by the king to teach the four young princes. The king has five sons and one daughter. To prevent bad things from happening to the eldest son, the king wanted Hyde to train the four brothers because, in the king's opinion, all four children were not ready for the throne. After a long trip, Hein finally arrived at the royal family's castle, but the soldiers stopped him because they thought he was a kid. He took out a letter introducing himself as a tutor, but they thought he was the tutor's son. The queen had to come personally to pick him up so he could easily enter. The queen apologized to Hein for the soldier's mistake, but he was used to being misunderstood, so it was okay. Hein felt honored that, as a commoner, he could enter the royal family's palace. The queen felt that the fact that the king chose him proved that he was talented because most of the previous tutors had quit their jobs midway through. While the queen saw that her four sons were all good, Hein also admired her love. But no matter what the princes are like, he will still strictly instruct them. Hein went in to meet the four princes and was overwhelmed because they were as beautiful as if they had come out of a painting. The fourth prince, Leonhard, walked over to greet Hein. He seems to be a haughty and vain young man who looks down on commoners. The fifth prince is Licht, who often displays a laid-back and childish personality, wandering the city and bringing home girls. The third prince is Bruno, who is the most serious of the brothers and the most studious excelling at all things academics. But when Bruno learned that Hein had never attended any school, he immediately looked down on Hein. The second prince is Kai, who seems to be the quietest and glares at Hein in a scary way. After greeting, Hein wanted to interview each prince to better understand them. He picks out lessons for them, but Leonhard refuses because he doesn't like the tutor. Bruno also didn't need a tutor who had never attended any school, so Hein now understood why the previous tutors had all quit. But Hein doesn't care and won't give up because the king has given him this job, so he will do it until the end. Leonhard insisted on denying Hein's lesson so that the king could send Hein away. Licht remembered that he had to receive guests right now, so if Hein wanted to interview him, come to his room in a few hours. Bruno also left and told Hein to come for an interview in his room in an hour. Kai also wanted to say something but was overwhelmed and left. Only Leonhard remained, so Hein pulled him in to interview him. Hein took a quick look at Leo's resume and knew that Leonhard was humble, calm, and kind to everyone, but in reality, he was still just an arrogant prince. Hein asked why Leonhard hated tutors so much. Leonhard brings up tutors being as obnoxious as bell peppers because he hates bell peppers. But the main reason is that the tutors always only care about the king's mood and never care about him. Second, he hates studying. Every time he was forced to study, he ran away. No one can catch up with him because he is a runner with many awards. Hein was about to give Leonhard a small test when Leonhard tried to run away. The main door was blocked, so Leonhard ran through the window. But Leonhard accidentally dropped the diary, and Hein caught it. He read it and found out that Leonhard always thought negative things about himself. He lied that it belonged to Licht, so Hein would return it to Licht, causing Leonhard to beg Hein to give it back to him. Hein will return it to Leonhard if he agrees to take the test. Leonhard agreed and started taking the test. Hein found that Leonhard was too lazy to study, but when he got serious, he still tried to solve the questions. Hein reads Leo's diary and learns that he also has a weak side and sees Bruno as a role model to aim for. The arrogance he shows is to cover up his weakness. Hein wanted Leonhard to return to this room at the end of the day so he could begin his studies. Leonhard was surprised that Hein really left. Suddenly the servant came to give Leonhard a cake, and on it was a message saying thank you for your hard work. Hein then went to meet the second prince, Bruno, who was considered a genius with great intellect. Bruno agreed to take Hein's test and finished it quickly, but he also wanted to challenge Hein to see if Hein had enough knowledge to teach him. He took out a chess set to test Hein's intelligence and was quickly defeated, but he refused to accept defeat and continued to challenge Hein in mental arithmetic. As a result, he continued to lose. Next are the areas of music, card playing, and finally a test that Bruno compiled himself. Hein not only finished it in seconds and also pointed out Bruno's mistakes. Bruno collapsed and knew he could not defeat Hein. Hein saw Bruno's thesis, so he took a look. He understood the effort that Bruno put in here and gave very accurate advice, so Bruno accepted him as a master. Hein realized Bruno was just trying to find someone he could consider a teacher. At this moment, Licht rushed in and saw that the interview was over, so he took Hein away. 
Hein knew Licht was an extrovert and often escaped the palace to hang out and flirt with girls. He entered Licht's room and was greeted by the girls. They all like Hein because of his cute, childlike face. Hein enjoys being misunderstood like this sometimes. Licht asked the three girls to leave the room for a moment so he could take the test. Licht kept looking frustrated while taking the test and even asked the three girls for answers. Hein wanted Licht to do it himself, so he did it while talking. And in just a moment, he was done. Licht really wanted to know who Hein really was because the previous tutors were all famous or had some connection to the royal family. But Licht then removed his serious expression to welcome the girl back into the room. Hein informed him to come to the meeting in the afternoon. Hein noticed that Licht seemed to be the one who needed to be the most wary because, on the outside, he looked stupid and playful but was someone who could do everything while his opponent was off guard. Hein then went to meet Prince Kai, who was considered dangerous and had gotten into a fight in military school. The servant said Kai was out and not many people could talk to him. He only had an hour left before the appointment time, so he quickly went to find Kai. Heine went to the garden and saw a royal dog, and it took his book. Hein chased after him and found Kai sleeping. Kai woke up, grabbed Hein's hand, and found it quite soft. Kai still treats Hein like a teacher and often comes here to play with the dog. He saw that Kai was nothing like what people said, and the eyes that looked like he was glaring at people seemed to be Kai's normal eyes. Kai is not good at communicating and loves soft things. When Hein sent him the test, Kai also obediently took the test without any comments. Their youngest sister, Adele, arrives and is introduced to Hein by Kai. Adele then went out, and Kai really liked Hein as his teacher because he was the first person to talk to him. Hein told Kai to come to the classroom in 30 minutes. He found Kai to be a friendly person, and he was wrong to think Kai was the most troublesome person. He decided not to believe in the rumors anymore but would contact them to learn more about each one. That afternoon, Hein finished grading, and there were 10 minutes left until the appointment time. Bruno was on his way to the classroom when he accidentally ran into Leonhard. Leonhard looked at his older brother who was still protesting this morning, but now he had changed, making Leonhard even more unable to accept it and run away. Bruno arrived at the classroom first, and Licht arrived soon after. Seeing Licht keep showing disrespect to Hein made Bruno very dissatisfied. Kai arrived and saw his two younger siblings arguing, so he came to mediate. Actually, both of them are not afraid of Kai, but Kai is just too pure so neither of them can argue with him. Only Leonhard hadn't arrived yet, but Bruno wanted to leave him alone. However, Hein only started the lesson when there were all the students, so Bruno was about to run to look for him when he saw Leonhard already sitting outside the door. Leonhard still thought he came to see Hein fail, but everyone was here. Hein returned the test to them. Bruno is obviously the perfect scorer. Kai got 87 points. Licht was a bit careless in simple sentences, so he only got 60 points. Leonhard alone only has one point. Everyone thinks there must be some problem here, but there really isn't any problem at all. Leonhard got it all wrong and only got one point for writing his name correctly. He was so embarrassed, but Kai encouraged him because Leonhard was good at sports. Leonhard thinks Hein embarrassed him in front of everyone, so he runs away. Bruno revealed that Leonhard hated studying as a child. Leo's first tutor was very strict and put pressure on Leonhard. That made him hate both studying and tutors ever since. Hein decides to change Leonhard because a tutor's duty is not to leave a scar on the student. Hein then jumped from the third floor and caught up with Leonhard by riding a horse. He tried to stop Leonhard, but Leonhard refused, so he rushed over and pushed Leonhard down. He told Leonhard not to be embarrassed about that score because he had no intention of punishing him. It's true that the score is terrible, but it's the tutor's duty to change it. He thinks that Leonhard has his own good sides, so he will teach Leonhard the things he is weakest at. The same goes for the other three princes, he will teach them the necessary things to prepare for the throne. Hein believes that a person who can admit their own weaknesses, like Leonhard, will be able to understand others. He said, you do not need to accept me as the royal tutor right away. But if you want to stop running away, won't you take my hand and try, little by little? Leonhard grabbed one of Hein's fingers and accepted him as a royal tutor. That day, Hein wanted to teach the four princes about common life, so he took them down to the city. Leonhard wanted to know why they themselves had to learn this. So Hein gave the example of a princess who did not care about the commoners but indulged in debauchery and was then overthrown and beheaded by the people. Leonhard was scared when he heard it and wanted to learn about the lives of civilians. Hein wanted the four to disguise themselves so they wouldn't be recognized by the people. Licht was the one who came up with the idea and sent them the costumes. When walking around, they are confused because they always get lost. 
Hyun took them to visit major tourist attractions in the city. He then took them to the shopping street and told them to buy whatever they liked. Bruno went to buy books, Kai also wanted to go buy something. Only Leonhard didn't know how to shop. Hein and Licht immediately took him to the general store to teach him how to shop. Leonhard chose to buy a doll, but he didn't know how to pay. So Hein showed him a way to convert currency denominations. Leonhard still didn't quite understand, so he gave all the silver coins to the shopkeeper to take for herself. She took a silver coin and returned the change to Leonhard. Leonhard was excited because he had successfully shopped. Licht and Leonhard then slipped away because they still had work to do with each other. Then Hein went book shopping with Bruno. Bruno was satisfied with every book in the shop, but because of his limited budget, he was only allowed to choose one. After some hesitation, he chose one. After that, the two went to look for Kai and found him at the park feeding pigeons. Licht felt a bit hungry, so he invited the group to eat hot dogs. Leonhard and Bruno don't know how to eat without a spoon and knife. Heinz showed them how to eat a hot dog. Bruno found this way of eating a bit difficult, but Licht and Kai adapted very easily. In the afternoon, when they were about to return to the palace, a robber stole an old woman's bag. Leonhard tried to chase the robber, but Kai stopped him because Kai had already taken the bag back for the old woman. It turns out that Hein allowed Kai to act while things were getting messy. The old woman thanked Kai and gave him a bag of candy. She also gave it to Leonhard because he stood up to help a stranger like her. Two soldiers arrived to take Hein and the princes back to the palace. Heinem asked the princes what impressed them most on this trip. They said they were impressed with what they experienced, so Hein pointed out to them that people's smiles are the most important thing. Even though there were a few bad people, the police acted very quickly to help resolve the situation. This city used to be very poor, but since their father, Victor, became king, he brought peace to this city and helped the people smile like that. Hein wanted them to strive to become an even better king than their father. The princes are determined to become kings with their own wishes. Victor was the youngest king when he ascended the throne at the age of 18, and with his outstanding talent, he was called the god of war. That night, a servant came to find Hein, saying that King Victor had returned after half a year and really wanted to meet Hein. The next morning, Hein arrived and saw that the four princes were also here. The servant called the five of them inside to meet the king. King Victor was happy to see his children again. But now is the time Victor wants to discuss as a king. He took a quick look at the prince's tests. Kai and Bruno have nothing to say. Regarding Licht, Victor knew he was bored, so he did it carelessly and only got 60 points. But Leonhard is the most troublesome case. If he continues like that, he will not be eligible to inherit the throne. Victor gave him three days to prepare for the test. This time he needs to score more than 60 points or he will be stripped of his right to the throne. Bruno finds this too harsh on Leonhard, but it is necessary. Leonhard felt so pathetic for disappointing his father. Bruno urged his younger brother to stand up and begin three days of training. He will help Leonhard in any way he can. The other two princes all agreed. Now Bruno wants to find some way to improve Leonhard. Lick comforted Leonhard that he at least knew what one plus one was, but Leo's reaction was quite suspicious. So Bruno asked Leonhard if he knew the answer. They were startled when they heard Leonhard answer three. Bruno didn't believe his brother could be that stupid, so he wanted Leonhard to think again and was even more frustrated when Leonhard answered 11. Hein taught him the basic way to count with his fingers, but if the answer was greater than 10, he wouldn't have enough fingers to count. Hein thought of another way. He ordered a cake divided into six pieces. If each of us took one, how many would be left? Leonhard answered easily that there would only be one slice left. Using tort as an example makes it feel more relatable. Hein followed up with another question. There are 30 slices of tort. If five people take one each, how many slices are left? Leonhard immediately replied that the answer was 25. A day passed, and Leonhard was able to improve his score to 15. He will start the test tomorrow. Hein had told the other princes to rest and let him handle the rest. Leonhard began to get discouraged because he thought he wouldn't be able to do it and that his father would hate him. But Hein still wanted him to continue, and the two studied until morning. The next day, Leonhard went to see Victor to take the test. Everyone is here, watching until time runs out. Victor let Hein grade the test, and Leonhard only got 59 points. This meant that Leonhard was stripped of his right to inherit the throne. But Victor graded the test in Hein's style. He gives Leonhard an extra point because Leonhard wrote his name correctly. The princes were happy because Leonhard was not stripped of his right to inherit the throne. Victor looked at the way Hein and the princes laughed and talked happily, making him very happy that they were able to get along. That night, Hein came over to have a few drinks with Victor. Victor is happy that Hein was able to help Leonhard get better, but Hein wants Victor to remember the deal. 
As long as no one knows about his past, he will continue teaching. Today Hein went down the street to buy some books and rested at a cafe. He was surprised because the waiter was licked. But Lick said that Hein may have mistaken him for someone else. Hein also thought the same, so he let it go. Lick was startled because Hein appeared here. He was afraid that if he were revealed, he would be hated by his brothers and his father. He decided to attract as little attention as possible. Licht asked the manager to change that customer, but the manager did not accept because this was the rule of this cafe. The manager found Licht quite strange today. At this moment, two billiard players at that cafe were arguing. They caused a pillar to almost fall on a girl. Luckily, Licht caught her and didn't forget to flirt with her. He then helped the two boys get along by hitting all the billiard balls into the holes. Hein was impressed with Lick's handling. He left and left a note telling Lick to come to his room after work. At this moment, a count came to the cafe on Victor's orders to take Lick to the palace. Hein was waiting in the classroom when he saw Lick being brought home by a count. Hein quickly went to Victor's office to talk. Victor heard everything from the count and was disappointed in Lick. He thought that Licht was indulging in debauchery, but Hein said that Licht was not debauchery but really took his work seriously. Victor gave Licht a chance to explain. Licht said at first he just thought it was a game because the waiters would attract girls. But when he tried, he messed it all up. But everyone taught him so patiently, and thanks to them he learned about the job and took a real interest in it. He won't quit. He doesn't care what anyone says. He is staying on. But Victor did not accept because he was worried that if Licht's identity was revealed, he could be in danger. But Licht believes that Victor does not love him at all. When he was young, he was sick, but his father never visited him. He thought that because he was the youngest son, there was no possibility of inheriting the throne. Licht believes that his father was only trying to protect the reputation of the royal family and never tried to understand him. Licht was angry and ran to the cafe. He plans to live independently from now on. Victor and Hein chased after him to persuade him to return, but to no avail. At this moment, the manager appeared. Victor said that he was Lick's father and wanted to try working here to understand Lick better. Lick tried to stop him, but Victor's eyes made the manager soften. The manager gave Victor a very masculine serving outfit. Victor asked Hein for advice, but he didn't like the stubborn nature of father and son, so he quietly sat and composed his lesson. Since this was their family's problem, it was best for Hein to stay out. Victor tried to do his best, but Lick believed that Victor would quickly fail. But no matter what job the manager assigned Victor, he performed very well. A foreigner needed help, and Victor immediately used a foreign language to help her. With his handsome appearance combined with extensive knowledge, Victor stands out in the cafe. The manager also really likes the way Victor works. Lick wondered, Victor was such a perfect father, but why didn't he care about him before? At the end of the working day, the manager invited Victor to come work next time, but he refused. The father and son then went outside to bring the sign inside. Victor apologized for not understanding Licht's feelings. He let Licht decide his own path. Licht is determined to continue this work. Through this incident, Licht also partly understood why Victor did not visit him. Victor said that he visited Licht while he was asleep because, no matter how busy he was, he always kept an eye on his precious treasures. After hearing that, Licht was so happy that he burst into tears. The Count is observing them from afar. His goal is to depose Victor and not let Victor have a successor. A few days later, Hein wanted the four princes to discuss a certain matter. For example, if a jewelry store is having difficulty and needs to borrow money from the state, what will they do? Licht quickly replied that he would lend them money, but the law prohibits the state from lending money to an individual, so this idea was rejected. Leonhard gave the idea to ask people for help, and each person would spend a little to help, then gradually it would be enough. It sounds a bit unconvincing, but Victor comes in and thinks this is pretty cool. He wanted to present it to the council, so he asked Leonhard to write a complete report. Seeing Victor being praised, Bruno felt a little jealous. Since childhood, Bruno has admired his father and wanted to become a king like him. But many people believe that their eldest brother, Heinz, is the one worthy of inheriting the throne. It seemed like Heinz was such an outstanding genius that he didn't need a tutor. Because he wanted to surpass Heinz, Bruno devoted himself to studying. But now Bruno felt jealous of Leonhard because he was worried that his younger brother could potentially be a genius like Heinz. Seeing that Bruno was upset, Hein tried asking about it, but Bruno said it was nothing. Hein discussed the thesis that Bruno was about to present at a university. This thesis is quite difficult, so Bruno wants to hear advice from Hein. He said Bruno just repeated his previous presentation without any new ideas. And most importantly, there were a lot of spelling mistakes, so Hein marked them all. Hein thought Bruno was worried about something, 
But Bruno didn't want to say it, so Hein didn't force him. Hein asked Bruno to write a thesis about the changes he wanted for the country. If Bruno doesn't complete it well in two weeks, Hein will no longer consider him a disciple. With motivation, Bruno was much more excited. He sat in his room diligently working on his thesis, and if he didn't like it, he would redo it and work all night, causing him to often fall asleep on the table. The next morning, Leonhard gave the report to his father while Bruno gave the thesis to Hein. Looking at Bruno's indescribably bad expression is enough to understand how hard he tried. The result was beyond Hein's expectations. He found him worthy of being his disciple, and with this thesis, he could confidently speak at the university. Bruno arrived at the university and began to give a lecture. He didn't want to disappoint Hein. When the presentation was over, Bruno felt a bit disappointed because he didn't see anyone reacting. But then everyone applauded loudly and helped Bruno regain confidence in himself. Many people then invited Bruno to give a presentation at their school. At this moment, Bruno's third idol, Dr. Dimitri, appeared. He was impressed by the presentation and invited him out for a meal. He told Bruno to give up his throne and become a scholar with him. He thought that Bruno would not be able to inherit the throne because his eldest brother, Heinz, was the most promising. He gave Bruno a week to respond before he left. Bruno is still hesitant because he still wants to become a king like his father, but he accidentally heard Victor praising Leo's report. This made him feel more sad and like he was incapable of becoming king. Bruno was still hesitant to give an answer when he saw Hein walking the dog. After Hein learned that Bruno was hesitant about trying to become king or a scholar, he told Bruno to choose the thing that made him feel like doing the most right now so he wouldn't have to regret it later. After receiving Hein's advice, Bruno had an answer. He went to see the doctor and said he would go to his school, but only later, when he was more mature, because his dream was to become king and he would not give up whether he had the chance or not. The doctor understood his determination, so he happily accepted the answer. Then he left. Hein appears and is impressed by Bruno's determination. He promises to do his best to support Bruno in becoming king. After Count Rosenberg heard that Bruno did not give up the throne, he was very angry and wanted to eliminate Hein. He sent someone to search for Hein's information. One night, Kai ran over to ask Hein for some advice. Bruno and Leonhard also came to ask Hein something. Seeing that his brothers were all here, Licht also came in. Hein wants to hear about Kai's question. He also didn't hide anything and said that Victor wanted him to improve his communication skills, but he didn't know what to do. Indeed, all four brothers have problems. Licht is too lackadaisical. Bruno is still quite lacking in confidence to be king. Leonhard has no personality problems but has major problems with calculations. Kai only has communication problems. He can communicate normally with family members, but it's different with servants and guards. For example, when Kai was greeted by the guards, his face showed emotions as if he wanted to hit them. As for the servants, Kai's face seemed to be very dissatisfied with what they were doing. Even though Kai didn't say those things, others would easily misunderstand his face. Kai was afraid that people would avoid him, so he didn't know what to say. The next morning, Hein planned to take Kai to practice communication. The three remaining brothers brought Adele. The girl said she wanted to go to the zoo because the dog Shadow had damaged her painting. Hein thinks this idea is okay and the first thing is that Kai needs to practice smiling. When everyone arrived, Hein wanted Kai to smile if he saw an animal he liked, but when Kai smiled, he looked even more dangerous. The group then went to see ostriches and then bears. Leonhard thought bears would be as cute as stuffed animals, but in reality, it was the opposite. Adele felt scared, so Kai comforted his sister and went with everyone to feed the animals. Everyone is surrounded by animals except Bruno and Hein. Kai was lying among the sheep. Hein wants Kai to go ask for more animal food from the staff over there. Kai was sweating as he approached the staff but didn't dare say a word. But when he heard Adele cry in pain from being bitten by a rabbit, Kai returned with everyone. Adele reconciled with Shadow after realizing she had raised her voice at it. Hein wants Kai to try communicating with close people, like servants in the palace. Lick taught Kai a few words that he often used to flirt with girls, which Hein thought was fine. Kai came to talk to the two maids and confidently said a few words, but they were still a bit scared, so they ran away. A girl carrying something was a bit heavy, so Kai came to help. He later helps many other people in the palace and is misunderstood by the soldiers. Kai felt that was enough because he didn't want to scare everyone anymore, so Kai went to the grass to rest. The maid came and covered Kai with a blanket and gave him tea. Because she was scared, she ran away again. 
Pine comes over and tells Kai to try saying hello and thank you to the others. It's polite, and maybe there will be a few people who will understand you. After that, Kai went back to his room, and the maid came to change the bed sheets. Kai timidly thanked her for always helping him. The maid felt happy and was no longer afraid of Kai. Kai ran to meet Hein and the three brothers to share his joy with them. A few days later, Victor called Hein and Kai. Bruno is also here. A year ago, Bruno and Kai were attending military school when something happened. They threatened teachers to get full marks without taking tests. Anyone who resisted was beaten. But that nightmare ended when Kai was discovered beating an injured student. The journalist wrote that this matter was hidden by the authorities, and the two princes were suspended from school, while the injured student was expelled and subjected to pressure from the authorities. Bruno says it's untrue, but Victor can't do anything because it's freedom of speech. Hein wanted to hear Kai tell everything. When they were both studying at military school, Kai's expression was always scary, so no one came close to him. He discovered that Bruno had many bruises on his body, but Bruno said he got injured while practicing swordplay. But one time Kai stood waiting for Bruno for too long, so he went inside to look for Bruno and saw Bruno being beaten by a male student named Futchs. Kai couldn't hold back his anger, so he went in and beat Futchs to a pulp. After that incident, Kai was suspended, and Futchs was also expelled. Bruno also dropped out of school because the school did not accept Kai. Victor has sent a complaint to the journalist and will wait for their response. Hein also sees an article about a criminal who has slipped into the palace. Kai wants to go see Futch to ask questions. Hein wants Kai to promise that no matter what the outcome, Kai is not allowed to use violence. Kai agrees with Hein. The servants all believed in Kai, so Kai smiled and thanked them. Bruno explains to them that it was Kai's best smile. Please don't misinterpret. Kai, Hein, and a soldier arrive at Futch's house. Futch agreed to talk to Kai and invited all three inside. He said that the reason he beat Bruno was because there were rumors that members of the royal family could do whatever they wanted. He saw that Bruno always got high scores, and the teacher only focused on teaching Bruno and Kai but neglected the other students, making Futch jealous and beating Bruno to vent his anger. Futch wanted to apologize, but when Kai was about to shake hands to make peace, he pulled out a gun and pointed it at Kai. His men also came out and controlled everyone. Hein, Kai, and the soldier were thrown into the cellar and tied up. Futch plans to use all three for blackmail. Since he was expelled from school, he was also expelled by his family. But when taking pictures, all three were joking, so he tried to threaten them to make them afraid. When threatening Kai, his expression remained normal. When Futch turned to threaten Hein, Kai lost his temper and broke the chain. But Kai remembered his promise to Hein, so he stopped. Futch turned to attack Kai, but Hein removed the chains and locked him. Futch's subordinates arrive. Hein asked the soldier to protect Kai. He has proven himself to be a perfect person in both knowledge and martial arts. He single-handedly defeated all of Futch's subordinates. Hein then handed Futch over to the soldiers. However, Kai still invited Futch to the palace to become a guard because he wanted to give Futch a chance to make things right. Hearing that, Futch expressed gratitude to Kai. A few days later, the bad rumors about the princes should clear up. Hein accidentally met Count Rosenberg on the road. Rosenberg said he wanted to chat with Hein for a bit. Hein refused, but Rosenberg carried him into the carriage and promised to take him back to the palace. Rosenberg said that the princes have changed positively since Hein arrived. Hein knows Rosenberg is the person behind everything. Rosenberg denies everything and only focuses on the criminal who slipped into the palace. The carriage had arrived at the palace, so Hein got off and met Leonhard here. Rosenberg said loudly that he found out who Hein really is. He heard Hein tutor children at a church before coming to the palace. Hein remained calm and told Leonhard to come inside with him. Leonhard was curious and wanted to know more about Hein's past, so he asked him. Hein said that a long time ago, he was a volunteer tutor. The children there thanked him with a meal for each day's work. Leonhard then gave the homework he did to Hein. Seeing that Leonhard no longer hated studying, Hein was quite happy because he had grown up. Hein went to see Bruno and found him teaching some children. The children wanted to know more about Bruno, like what he did and whether he had a girlfriend or not. Bruno does not want to reveal his private life, disappointing the children. Hein said that if you cannot lead this many children, how can you hope to lead millions of subjects as a king? Bruno accepted Hein's advice, so he opened up to the children. Next, Hein went to see Kai. Kai said he wanted to go back to military school, but didn't dare tell his father because he knew he wouldn't accept. Hein advised Kai to convince Victor himself instead of asking others, because this is the courage he must have if he wants to be king. 
Hein then went to the cafe to meet Licht. He realized that, thanks to this work, Licht had a better understanding of the social situation. Hein wants him to continue on the path he believes in. Licht sounded like Hein was saying goodbye. The next morning, the four brothers gathered to discuss Hein's past. Based on what Leonhard heard from Rosenberg, they still couldn't know much, so they decided to sneak into Hein's room. At this moment, Hein arrived and invited them into his room. They were surprised when Hein's room was so messy. When they learned the reason Hein couldn't clean the room was because he was busy preparing a lecture for them. They decided to help Hein clean the room. Bruno comes up with a plan for the best cleanup. Hein wanted them not to touch his private box while they cleaned up. This made them think this was something containing Hein's secrets. Leonhard asked Hein to scratch his back so Licht would have a chance to open it. But before Licht could touch it, Hein noticed his actions. Leonhard asked Hein to get some cake, but Hein wanted them to leave him alone to work. Leonhard was sneaky and opened the box, ignoring Hein. Inside were the things they and the students at the church had given to Hein. The children loved Hein and wanted to become someone like him. Hein claims that all students are precious to him, including the princes. To punish them for being curious, Hein would give them more homework. They then continued to clean Hein's room until the evening. They discover that Hein still has the newspaper about a criminal who has slipped into the palace. The princes thought this was fake news because criminals could not hide in a place with so many guards. Hein says it is not good to assume what is true without confirming it for yourself. For example, what if it were him? The princes laughed because they were sure that Hein was not a criminal. The next day, Hein asked them to investigate the truth of this claim. He told the princes that if you heard rumors of a criminal inside the palace, would you laugh it off? They could be targeting the successor. If you become king, a single error in judgment could lose you this entire country. Hein would like them to verify the truth of the matter and make a judgment for themselves as candidates for the throne. This is today's lesson. Kai wants to find the person who wrote this newspaper, but the author's name is not written on the newspaper. But he knows the person who edited the article, so he'll go see that person. However, that writer resigned after writing that article. The four brothers went looking for that man but found no information. At the end of the day, Licht returned and said that he had investigated that the man had changed his name and appeared several times in the city hall. They went to the city hall and caught the man as he was about to leave. They threatened him, causing him to panic. The man confessed that he was paid by a mysterious man to write this article. The mysterious man asked him to write an article about the events before King Victor ascended the throne. And the criminal is now hiding in the palace. They then went into the palace archives and found records of events before King Victor ascended the throne. They looked up the list of criminals during that time and saw Hein's name. Hein was arrested on charges of kidnapping and assassinating Victor. They sat down together to discuss and concluded that Hein was definitely a criminal because they certainly wouldn't face any danger if the criminal was Hein. They immediately went to look for Hein but did not find him. So they went to meet Victor. Victor said that in the past, he used to sneak out of the palace to observe people's lives. One time he was out, his watch was stolen. Victor was chasing the thief when he met Hein. Hein told the two kids to return the watch to Victor. He wanted Victor to go home, but Victor followed Hein to where the orphans were. Hein is responsible for leading this group and strictly prohibiting them from committing crimes. Hein saw that Victor was hungry, so he gave him an apple, but he only took a bite and then gave it to the girl nearby. Over the next several days, Victor continuously escaped from the palace to help Hein. He showed Hein how to make money to take care of the children. Witnessing this reality, Victor promised himself that he would change this country when he became king. Hein gradually becomes the only friend Victor has and the only person he can open up to. The harvest festival was coming up, so Victor gave Hein his gold watch so Hein could have money to take care of the children. A few days later, the guards discovered Victor was gone and thought he had been kidnapped, so the army went looking for him. Hein and Victor were discovered and were chased by soldiers. Victor's watch fell from Hein, causing the soldiers to think that Hein had kidnapped Victor. They pulled out guns and shot Hein, but Victor stood up to cover Hein, injuring him. The soldiers did not want to take responsibility, so they blamed Hein for assassinating Victor. Hein got angry and attacked them, but Victor told him to stop. Hein was then arrested and imprisoned. While in prison, Hein always prayed for Victor. After Victor recovered from his wounds, he went to see Hein. He explained everything to the king, so Hein was pardoned. A year later, Victor became king and built a church so Hein could teach children. From an illiterate orphan, Hein became the respected tutor he is today. Victor and Hein decided not to announce this to avoid controversy. If the truth is announced, then Hein will leave the palace. Tomorrow will be the prince's last lesson and Hein's last day teaching here. That night, all four princes could not sleep. The next morning, they went to see Hein. 
Hein heard the four say that Victor had told them about the misunderstanding, but Hein wanted them to think like kings and ignore emotional issues. If a criminal sneaked into the palace, what would they do? Licht answered honestly that he would chase the criminal away. Hein's original purpose was to come here to train them to become kings, and a king cannot make decisions with overwhelmed emotions. He comments that Leonhard is a dunce. However, he is very clever to know it himself. He has the strength to see his own weaknesses and conquer them. Moreover, he possesses a more powerful imagination than any other. If he becomes king, he can save the kingdom from danger with his strength and imagination. Next is Licht, he claims to be a playboy, but he is very serious. He is humble, treats everyone equally, and can listen to their stories. If he becomes king, he will create a kind kingdom that will reach out to anyone without discrimination. Then there is Bruno, he is highly knowledgeable, has never neglected his efforts to study, can impart knowledge to others, and has the ability to judge and make good decisions. If he becomes king, he could lead this kingdom correctly. Finally, there is Kai, he has a selfless heart and the strength to overcome adversity. If he becomes king, he can protect peace for all people. Now the last lesson is over. That afternoon, Hein officially left the palace. In the evening, Victor went to see the four children and saw that they were all unhappy, saying that the new tutor chosen by Count Rosenberg was coming. Victor only hopes that the four children will get along with their new tutor, but they do not accept anyone other than Hein. Since the council has not yet decided on a teacher, the four princes want to give their opinion to the council to prove that Hein is the perfect person for this role because the royal tutor must be the one to give advice to help the princes grow to the point where they are fit for the throne. The princes intend to prove how mature they have become to convince the council. Together, they prepare a presentation to convince the council. Victor feels very happy that his children are trying so hard. Hein had returned to the church, and Victor had come to greet Hein to let him know that there would be a meeting to choose a new tutor this afternoon, and that the four princes were planning something. If you want, Hein can come and see. At this meeting, Rosenberg recommended a tutor that the council seemed satisfied with, but four princes arrived and objected. The four princes want Hein to return as royal tutor, but Rosenberg exposed Hein's past in front of everyone, saying that Hein was a criminal and did not have any educational qualifications. But the princes argued that everyone has made mistakes in the past. Right now they are thinking of themselves as future kings and not as children. They don't want to make a wrong decision that will affect the country. They used the last lesson Hein taught to declare the goal they wanted to achieve when they became king. Thanks to Hein, they realized those valuable things. Their speech was praised by Crown Prince Eines. Hein was also very emotional. Upon leaving the hall, Victor encountered Eines and Rosenberg again. Eines was surprised that his younger brothers had grown up significantly. It was time for the vote, so Victor returned to the hall. Ein strictly forbade Rosenberg to interfere in this matter anymore because he wanted to compete fairly with his younger brothers. The next day, the royal tutor arrived, and the four princes were very happy about Hein's return. 